Champagne puffs in the house, y'all. Today, we're going to talk about the pedigree of the champagne puppies. As you can see, we got champagne here. He is eight weeks old. Phenomenal bully structure. Let me turn him around so you can see his, his, front, his frontal suck structure. This is kind of shaky for him, so he's, he's going to feel his balance moving. Um, somebody was supposed to get champagne this passing Sunday, but they bluff McMuffin me, bluffing McMuffin me, but he's, fortunately for me, someone else realized that guy's mistake and said, yo, that guy that bluffed on you is going to really regret it. And uh, today on Instagram, I put out all the dogs in his pedigree. As you can see, this is an eight week dog and he has phenomenal structure, phenomenal bone and a big dome piece already at eight weeks old. This guy will be going to Georgia uh, along with the other Merle. So he'll be living it up out there. Plenty of space in Georgia, plenty of room for him to run and develop. This guy, so we'll first we'll get into his father. His father is a lilac tribe, nature, nature boy 301. He won best in show at Barks and uh, first and only Barks and Violets. Um, it was a dog show and a car show. He won first, and he won best dog overall that day. The second dog in this dog's pedigree is that dog's father, nature's father, which is champion Bow Boa, who is a champion uh, tri chocolate tribe. Um, Bow Boa's father was the one and only grand champion Rocco Mania. Um, Rocco Mania is a grand champion in many different registries, not just the ABKC, not just the UKC. He's probably a champion in about 10 different registries, but he's a grand champion, which means he's a champion of all champions. And Rocco Mania is still alive today. So he was what you would call a living legend. So let's give Rocco Mania his flowers, his flowers, y'all. So next after that, we go to Eminence Boss. Eminence Boss is a champion brand dog. And after Eminence Boss, we go to dun, 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 Dax. Dax is a really nice American bully. He's probably a grand champion. I'm not sure. I think Dax is the number one or number two most famous American bully that ever lived. Arguably, he's probably number one because he's the one that made those really short bullies with the really wide bodies that everyone loves so much. But the other most popular uh, American bully, dun, 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 is the Hawk. Grant's the Hawk, which is an XL American bully. DDK9 is the Hawk. And yes, this guy has the Hawk's blood in him as well. Yes, so this is a cross between DDK9 and the Hawk. Um, as you can see, this is an eight-week-old puppy. Very very, very large, I should say. I mean, the bone structure on this guy is phenomenal. If you go to my Instagram, you can check it out. You can check out on Instagram this guy's. Uh, you can check out his his um, all these names that I'm telling you. I just put them all up in the story, and um, you can check it out in the post where I put all the dogs in the post. Also, he has another champion in his blood, Keller's Diesel the Mac which is another XL dog. He's an XL champion. He was in uh, the magazines. He's a phenomenal dog with a big head, a big body. He's an XL back when XLs were actually XLs, not Mastiffs, Pit Bulls, or whatever you want to call them now. This guy's a little shaky, so I'm going to hold him close since you guys already saw his structure. Um, so next what I want to get into is a lot of people talk about the pedigree of their dogs and and, and the dog's pedigree, they may be a champion here, there may be a champion there, and it's just like once, and he's like 10 times back. So I will tell you this. Um, you got nature, which won best in show. So I will argue to say that nature is a champion. And nature has produced some phenomenal dogs with some big, gigantic heads and big muscles. Nature is a dog that outproduces himself every time. Outproduces himself means he creates dogs 
that are bigger and badder than he is. So you have underachievers and you have overachievers. Nature is an overachiever. He produces. He's a producer. You may have a dog that has the look. You may have a dog that has the background, but can he produce? There's only one way to know if your dog can produce, and that's with productions. We have a few productions from nature that prove that nature was the dog to make production. If you want to see those productions, go to my Instagram channel. I put it up there. So, like, I, that's what I was saying previously. A lot of people want to say, oh, that's how far back is that in your pedigree? How far back? Um, let's put it to you like this. If my grandmother is a black person and my grandfather was a black person and they both were strong and big and healthy and the strongest of all the people around, then they had a kid, which was me. What does that make me? That makes me a kid of two black people that are the strongest and the baddest around. If I have the, the, the pedigree to prove it, if I have the genetics, it, it just goes down the line. I mean, where is the other genetics coming in from? And like I said, his grandfather is a champion. His great-grandfather is a champion. And his father is arguably a champion. I mean, you can say that some dogs are what you call legends. Nature is a legend in the streets of Maryland. He sires litter, litters all the time, and every litter he sires is naturally, he naturally jumps on a female and mounts the female, and these pups are born, and their heads are like this, and their bodies are just monstrosities of just straight up muscle and head. As you can see, this is an eight-week-old pup. Look at the bone on this guy. Look at the paws on this. This is an eight-week-old puppy. So, you know, when he comes to this the owner's home, he's going to eat way more food and swell out. And basically, we've done breedings already, so we know what, what's going to be produced. <clears throat> so when you question us, just know one thing when you question us. There's so many champions in this dog's blood that it'll blow your mind. Another dog we got in here is Johnny Bags Chestnut, who is now currently at Pro Bulls. Another dog we got in here is Louis V. Louis V is Johnny Bags' uh, son. That was the breeding between Johnny Bags and uh, Bully Blue Giants Gazellus. Gazellus is a 140 pound female. So that's on the bottom. The bottom side is the DD Canine, the Bully Blue Giants, Gazellus. Um, we can go on and on with the names. And then on the top, you got the Dax line. And you got some more XLs. So, I mean, on the top and on the bottom, you have nothing but champions. That's all you have. Champions and grand champions. It's like, when it comes to these dogs that I have over here, the bloodlines, if you're talking about every litter has like 10, 15 champions in the blood. Not one, not two, not a breeding from a champion. No, 10 or 15. And then to top that off, we have productions that we've done that we know what we produce. <clears throat> if we don't produce the top or the best, then we won't lose breeding again. So I already know what this guy's going to turn into. Look at him. He's sleep, milk drunk. I mean, his head is the size of like, you know what I mean? These are some big hands, y'all. Look at his head. Just boom, boom, boom. But if you want to see his pedigree, you can go on my channel. His grandfather is Champion Balboa, a, ch uh, a chocolate tribe. Very phenomenal. And then you have Didi Canines the Hawk. You have Pro Bulls. Um, Johnny Bags Chestnut, which is from Bully Blue John, I mean, which is from uh, Big Ballers Kennel. So, you know, you got to think, these are the biggest, the baddest names in the world coming together, and we put it in a small little package of a dog, and you're just going to get, like, the phenomenal pedigree, and it was for $1,000. $1,000, you cannot beat it with a baseball bat. So this guy is off the market. Uh, he's off the market, but he has a bunch of siblings. He has brothers and he has a few sisters that are just as phenomenal. I mean, each day it's like one dog could be the biggest and then the next day another dog can start moving on that side on that. I've never seen that really before until now where one dog is the biggest and the baddest and then the next day the next guy is bigger and the baddest. But what I want to tell y'all is if y'all want champions bloodline dogs, 
and you want a great price, come to Quark Kennels, baby. We got them guard dogs, baby. Come to the camp.